can always record on my computer because it just seems like the cloud doesn't like me very much anymore. Okay, so gallery view and let's go ahead and get started. So one second. All right. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right. Hey, welcome everybody. Um, let me confirm we are recording. So that is good. Welcome everybody to this training. Um, I'm really excited to have you guys here today. My name is Sam Carlson and this training today is kind of a, this is what I'm here with my good friend, Dr. Andrew Wells. Andrew, you can, you people have heard you, but you can say hello. Howdy. Good to be on. Okay. Yeah, no, we're excited to have you. So uh, um, I'm excited to have you guys on here. And we have our users on here, uh, some of our users, but we also have, um, you know, people who are, are not familiar with our platform, for our platform. So I'll cover that briefly. But before we do that, um, today we are going over um, proven processes to getting new patients. Now, this this uh, this training stemmed from a lot of inquiries from our users, from clients that I've had in the past. And the reality is, is I spend so much time being focused on hooks, angles, creative, how to get attention, that while I'm very familiar with the space of converting leads into patients and things along those lines, I don't have the tactical approaches that, uh, that people need in order to, to do that. I just, I mean, <laughs> I can't be everywhere at once doing everything. And, and sometimes I just have found it very uh, limiting while I can provide some advice. I really want somebody who has figured it out. Hence, Dr. Andrew Wells. And so um, Andrew and I have known each other for a while. Um, we actually met at Dr. Chad Wilner's MAP event about two years ago, year and a half ago. I don't really know how long ago it was, but long enough for us to kind of rub shoulders, work together. And, and really I found a, a great level of respect for, um, for what he does. So he has agreed to come in and share some of his proven approaches and tactics to that process. So let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, again, Sam Carlson is my name. Um, this training is, uh, you could say it's hosted or powered by PagerStream. If you don't know what PagerStream in is, we're the only um, Facebook ads automation platform that lets you run your own ads, get leads, and follow up on autopilot. So um, if you want to learn more, go to mypatientstream.com. But again, um, I wanted to give Dr. Andrew Wells a little bit of, you know, an intro before we jump into this. Um, Andrew spent several years and, and he, he can tell you his own story, but he spent several years in uh, the practice growing slash optimizing slash making this thing an actual business role. And today he, uh, he still does that. He helps manage, he helps manage clinics to success and to profit solutions and all these kind of things. And he helps people also integrate their practices with a much more simple approach than uh, some of the more convoluted and expensive approaches out there. Um, he's an awesome guy. He's got a really nice uh, beard right now and slick back haircut, um, which I hope we get to see here in a little bit. Um, but anyway, Andrew, thanks for doing this. And I will turn the time over to you, my friend. I'll stop my share here. Well, thanks for the introduction. You know, it's funny you're wearing a hat and talking about beards because sitting next to me when my hair is not all slicked back. Can you see this? Not yet. Oh, I have to. I oh, yeah, I got to buddy. My... Let me see here. I think you have to give me uh, permission. It says uh, video. Can't start video because host has stopped it. All right. There you go. Um, still not letting me on. It says, um, unable to start video. You can't start your video because host has stopped it. Let's see here. Hide on, put on hold. Sorry guys. Give me one second here. Let's see here. You are a panelist. I've promoted you to a panelist. Uh, I'm going to make you the host. How about that? Perfect. 
Oh, I have all the control now. There you go. Yeah. All With right. Great cool. power comes great responsibility, my friend. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I wanted to show you this too. We're talking about Idaho and we're talking about beards and I have my hey. Idaho beard hat that I got Good man. not too long ago. Yeah, sitting Good next man. to me. So yeah, I love this hat. People are always like, what is that? Is that a gnome? <laughs> that's, we got, that's we Idaho got some of those here. We got some of yeah. those here. I bet you do. Yeah, well, well hey, thanks, thanks for, the for doing this. Time, time yeah, to man. you, my friend. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. I really appreciate it and really enjoy working with you. And let me, um, let me share my screen here. I'll get some, uh, some slides up here. Huh, it's not letting me do that either. Um, that's weird. Uh, share, it says allow Zoom to share your screen. Um, huh, open system preferences. You know what? I'm gonna do without slides if that's okay. Or you can refresh and come back real quick. You got to make me the host, but you can refresh and come back real quick if you need system preferences. Uh, if you've got slides prepared. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then, yeah, I, then, I do. Uh, they're, they're pretty limited slides. Um, I can do it with or without, whatever you, whatever you want to do. It's up to you, my friend. I, I don't want to limit you. I mean, this is, to me, this is a really uh, a tactical and important training. I think people are going to get a lot out of this. So if I had to, uh, you know, I think if people had to choose to wait, for you to refresh. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. Yeah. I think I just made you the host again. I hope. Um, and I can, I can tell some jokes while you're gone. <laughs> did I, uh, did I make you the host now? Do you have? Yeah, I, uh, believe I should be go. So if okay, for whatever okay. reason, when he drops off, you guys just hop back on. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll start. Uh, okay. Cool. Should it work now? Let me see here. Still asking me to open my system preferences. Well, here I'm, I'm going to do it, Sam. I'm going to do it without slides. It'll, it'll work. It'll work great without okay. slides. All right. If that, if that works for you, it works for me. It's up to you, buddy. Awesome. Well, let me give you a really quick background on um, on why I get excited about this training. And when you, when you asked me to do this, I'm like, heck yeah, I want to get on because I actually really like talking about converting leads into patients. And a little bit on my background, when we first opened our practice, we opened with zero marketing budget. So I started our practice in an era where we didn't have Facebook, we didn't do any like social media or digital marketing, and all of our patients we got from word of mouth and from screening. So I was a doctor and I get some flack for this, but when we opened our practice, we were, my wife and I were screening in Walmarts and grocery stores, car washes, like that's literally where we got our patients from. So I want you to imagine for a minute, like it go, go to a car wash while people are waiting for their car to be washed, and try to get them to come inside your chiropractic office. It's really, really tough. Same thing for grocery stores and Walmarts. Like we were everywhere. We went, we like church events, like wherever someone would allow us to talk about chiropractic, we went there. So um, it worked for us. We built actually a pretty large practice doing that. But to be completely honest, I hated screenings. It took a weekend time. I didn't, I felt like unprofessional standing out there doing those things, but it was just, a, it was a necessity. But the one great thing that came out of it, well, two great things, we got a ton of patients that way. But number two is it, I really got good at talking to patients and getting them to come inside our practice for new patients. And when Facebook came along, I'm like, uh, it was like, it was gr groundbreaking. It, was, it completely changed my life. So now instead of having to do screenings every weekend, I could now get leads through Facebook. And there's a challenge getting leads through Facebook, just like with doing live screenings, is that you're taking a cold lead, cold traffic, and turning them to a warm lead and a warm prospect. And there's a lot of skill that comes with that. And what I realized was that through skills and screening, doing live screenings, I could take those same principles and those same skills and apply that to Facebook. And we were really effective at converting cold traffic from social media. And there's another level to this. So it's great if the doctor is good at it, but then you also have to train your staff, your front desk staff, how to do it like a ninja. And so that's what we're gonna to cover today on how to do that. And so the reason I get really passionate about this and teaching it and watching other doctors succeed with it is because uh, you don't have to screen anymore and you can get really good at converting Facebook leads, which is great for your business. It's great for helping people um, and there's so many benefits to it. So. Um, the reason this is critical, so, many, so often docs want to know, well, what's your day one strategy? What's your day two strategy? Tell me how to convert more patients in a report of findings. That stuff's all important, but 
we're going to talk today about the, the, the top of your funnel. And if the top of your funnel is constricted because you're not good at converting leads, it's going to affect your day one conversions, your day two conversions, and ultimately your, your bottom line. So in my opinion, what we're talking about today in terms of re recruiting patients is the, is the most important part. If we, can, if we can just get your clinic to do 5, 10, 15% better, that's going to directly affect your bottom line with those same percentages because you're getting more people into your funnel. So overall, here's, here's how I want you to look at, at leads. And sometimes I think because these leads are coming in through Facebook and through media and online, oftentimes I don't think they get the same respect or, or uh, focus as, as if you're doing, for example, a live screening because the person's right in front of you. And here, here's how I look at it. Back in, uh, when I was in chiropractic school, and uh, I know one of you, what's up, Dan, uh, is on here. We went to chiropractic school together. I was in a, um, a motor, the Palmer Chiropractic Iowa motorcycle gang. And we were, we're not a pretty tough gang, but on the weekends, we would, when we had time off, we would go ride our motorcycles up and down the Mississippi River Valley. It was really pretty. So one day we're riding with my four or five buddies and all of a sudden the guy in the front stops his motorcycle, pulls it off the highway. So we all, we all pulled in after him. He jumps off his motorcycle, runs in the middle of the highway and starts picking something up off the ground. And I'm like, like, I had no idea what was going on. I'm like, what's happening? What's, what's he doing in the highway? And then a car flies by at like 55 miles an hour and this big poof of paper flies up in the air. And all of a sudden I realized like, holy cow, those are, 20, 50, $100 bills. And I realized while my buddy's in the middle of the highway, he's scooping up all this cash. And then all of a sudden, all of us are in the middle of the highway scooping up money. Uh, a bunch of cars stopped. Other people got out of their cars and they're grabbing money. And we had no idea where this money came from. And so when, when, we, when we got all the, got all the money, we're like, what the heck just happened? And we're, we're all sitting here with like fistfuls of cash. And then we found this envelope. And it was a bank envelope. And on the envelope, it had this woman's name on it. And we're like, holy cow, this probably flew out, out of this lady's car or something. And so we actually were able to track down the lady. It was like an elderly woman. And she had just come from the bank. She had set like, I think it was like 3,000 bucks that she had set on top of her car, got in the car and took off. And we actually, we found her and, and we gave whatever money that we were able to collect. It was like, I think it was like 2,000 bucks or something. So most of her money, we were actually able to deliver it back to her. And she was so happy. She's like, you guys have no idea. She's like, I'm on a fixed income. This is the only money I have to live off of every month. And she's like, it's a bummer. I've lost all this money, but you guys like, holy cow, like you saved, like, this is incredible. And she was really grateful. So by the way, we were a benevolent biker gang, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, and it was funny because like you see this cash floating around and, and people like would stop their cars and we stopped our bikes and we're running around to pick it up. Now, as doctors and chiropractors and clinic owners, you have to look at patient leads the exact same way. So when you get a lead in your, in your inbox or a phone call or a voicemail or a referral, that patient is worth whatever the case value of that patient is worth. So if it's a chiropractic patient, maybe it's 1500 bucks, 2000, $3,000. If it's an, like a medical patient, if you're integrated, maybe that's a 5,000, a $9,000 patient. So, you should be responding to your leads with the same effort that my buddies and I were responding to seeing this cash float around on the highway. It's the exact same thing, only you're not risking your life by getting run over by a car. So, so often the one thing I see with clinics is that they get really sort of lackadaisical about leads that come in and there's no urgency and there's no, they're not looking at it as a dollar sign. They're looking at it as maybe processing another patient or, uh, they're looking at it as work. It's not work. This is like money that's landing in your lap. And again, you're not doing physical car wash screenings. All screenings. These are. This is like money just coming. It's like your your email inbox or in your phone that that needs to be processed. And my point in saying all this is somebody else in your town will and they'll be all over those leads they'll be happy to get those leads so so you want to approach it with that sort of mindset so every time your phone rings every time you just that's five thousand bucks that's ten thousand bucks and it really changes your perspective on how you handle leads so i hope that makes sense that's how, how i look at it and i think that's how most people should look at it um, because it's what drives your business so 
first, uh, the first thing I want to go over today, and this was sort of my first slide, is have realistic expectations with Facebook leads. When you're when you're trolling, when you're when you're advertising on Facebook, it's kind of like dredging a river, and you're gonna pick up. So twenty percent of the people that land in your in your funnel are gonna be what I call the boots, the rubber boots, the spare tires. Like you're just dredging these people out of the river. They're not good candidates. Just know that you're gonna get some 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 uh, some tires. Another twenty percent of those leads are gonna be like they're going to be your layup patients. This is like the treasure. These are people who are like, oh my gosh, you have a decompression program or a regenerative medicine program. Like, I'm totally, I was totally looking for something like this. When can I come in? And they're easy patients to convert. Then you have the 60% of your patients who, are, who require skill. So these are kind of like the people that what I call like the slippery bass. So you're fishing for bass, right? And they require sport. It requires effort, skill in order to sort of reel them in and get them into your clinic. And sometimes that takes skill over the phone. Sometimes it takes persistence and following up those patients. But that's the majority of the people who you're going you're gonna to find on Facebook. So just know when Sam is doing his job and delivering leads that these aren't like hot. Most of them, 80%, are not like hot to trot and throw a bunch of money at you and they want to sign up and become patients. You have to take them through a process. So the first thing I want to talk about is urgency. When we have, in our office, when we had, uh, we had a saying, and the saying was patients before paperwork, which means that when we're, we were seeing patients in our, in our clinic during patient hours, we were totally focused on patients we're not doing charting and paperwork and things like that. We're focused on people, except for one thing, for new leads. So the only time we would ever not handle like a person in front of us is when we had a new patient lead. So we have something called our bat phone and our bat phone was our marketing phone. So when we would do, so when we have like, whether it be a Facebook ad or a newspaper ad or um, a radio television ad, we'd always list this one number we call it our bat phone. So anytime that that number rang, we knew that's a new patient. So that, that took first place, that took urgency. So let's say for example, this bat phone rang, and we did it one of two ways, by the way. Um, during clinic hours, sometimes we'd have a, uh, we had like a, a phone that if, if that certain number rang, it would be a different tone. So we could hear that it was a different tone. Uh, and sometimes we would just switch that number to a cell phone. So we had literally a red cell phone, just like Batman's phone. If that red cell phone rang, everybody stops everything. We're all scrambling off our motorcycles to pick up that cash in the road. And so now the question is, well, what happens if you're seeing a new patient at the front desk and, and the front desk is occupied? Then you need to make, make sure that you have a third, a second person, a third person, and a fourth person in line who can pick up that phone. So literally what we would do is if our front desk person was with a patient and that phone rang, they would toss the phone to our number two person. If that person wasn't there, there was a number three person. If that person wasn't there, I was the person to answer the phone. So we never let that phone go to voicemail. It didn't happen. Well, it happened occasionally, but then we would, I would beat all my staff. Just kidding. But, uh, it was the Voicemail guys, they're going to go on Google and they're going to go to their second choice. So who else deals with back pain? Who else deals with knee pain or headaches? They're going to hey, go to somebody else. It's just how it Andrew, works. Andrew, real quick, can you yeah. go back to, uh, can you go back to you, you beat your, uh, you beat your employees? <laughs> Not because it was funny, but because I think you just broke up just a little bit there. Um, oh, and I sorry. think for the yeah. most part, we're good but there's sometimes where it gets a little choppy. So I'll just kind of hang out and let you know if that happens. Okay, cool. Yeah, if you give me a little X sign, I'll, I'll look at you and I'll, I'll know to, to back up. Yeah, so um, yeah, the point in, say, in saying this is that we, we always had a dedicated line that we would handle leads. So we know if that phone rang, like it was just needed to be urgent. So uh, that's probably the most important thing with handling leads. So if you, if you have leads that are coming in through email, so for example, Facebook leads, they get loaded into a landing page or a funnel, and all of a sudden you get an alert in your email. Those email leads need to be handled within five minutes. So if, they're, if someone doesn't contact them in less than five minutes, the, your, the percentage in your show rate drops dramatically. And so we would always, just like our bat phone, we would have our email, a uh, computer with our email uh, pulled up on a computer screen. 
And it was very easy to tell, like we, our front desk team was always manage, or monitoring that email address. So as soon as we saw a new lead come in, they would pick up the phone, call that patient, and go through the, uh, our marketing script or our phone script. So some of you I know that are listening right now have, uh, have systems where the lead comes in and they automatically just click, the patient can click on your schedule and automatically schedule time for, the, for them to come in to, for a new patient appointment. And that's all fine and great. But I really think that it's important that they talk to a live person in your office before they show up to your clinic. So as soon as you can get them on the phone, there's urgency there with the patient. But there's also urgency with your office. Get them on the phone, start building some rapport with the patient, and it's going to dramatically increase your rate. What I see happen really often is that uh, in the beginning of this call, I mentioned that doctors sometimes get a little bit uh, loose or lackadaisical with their follow-up. Um, front, sometimes the front desk may see an, a lead come in and they're like, well, I could call this person right now or I could just finish, finish processing this one patient or fill out this paperwork or do something else. And half an hour will go by or an hour will go by, maybe two hours. If you get to the point where it's your two hours after the lead comes in, your, your conversion rate for that person showing up will, will just, it falls off a cliff for a lot of reasons. Like, well, the, think of it as from a patient standpoint, they've just, they, they've set up a new patient appointment, but they haven't heard from anybody in the office, especially if it's an older patient. The question is, well, I hope they got my appointment. Like I hope they got the message and uh, I'm really not sure what to do when I walk in. They're going to have some questions that really only a, a human being can answer for those people. So I, I really think that it's important, even if you have an automated system, just to reach out and call a patient, it's going to help your show rate. So, the next thing I want to talk about with urgency is, are, are you actually monitoring and doing some quality control over your front desk staff? This is another really common problem I see is that when I, when I ask doctors and we start digging down into their, into their lead management system, and I start asking some really basic questions like, how, like are your, is your staff following up within five minutes? Are they using a script? And the doctors will say, yeah, 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 we, 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 they're, they're doing all that. And then when you actually start to dig down into it, they, I think sometimes they're trusting that their staff has that same urgency that they think they have. And when you start actually tracking it and monitoring it, what doctors actually discover is, holy cow, they're not doing any of the things that I thought they were doing. And I'm going to, at the end of this training, I'm going to give you some tips on how to, how to correct that and really easy stuff. But are you actually listening to the calls? Are you checking to make sure that your staff is actually following up in a timely manner? So don't assume if you assume I, I promise you you're missing out on tons of patient leads just because your, your staff doesn't have the same urgency that you do. Um, okay. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and then there's also a lot of leads that are lost off shift. So let's say that you have clinic hours from eight o'clock in the morning to five o'clock at night. What happens if a lead comes in at six o'clock or at seven o'clock or seven 30? Do you have someone calling and following up with those people? What happens if a lead comes in at one o'clock? What's your protocol for that? And so let me give you an example of this and I'll show you how we actually make it. I think my Siri just popped on. That was weird. Um, so uh, if, let's say that you have uh, a newspaper ad that you run on a Sunday morning. And what, what happens is these people open up their newspaper, they see your ad, they call in at eight o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. Not a time when you really want to have to answer marketing calls, but if you don't do it and you, you call them back on Monday morning, you're going to miss at least 50% of those leads. You're not, you're, not going to, you're not going to be able to get a hold of them because they either forgot they called in or they're like, oh, you know what? I do have a knee pain problem or I do have a headache problem. I'm, I need to research this. And they end up going somewhere, somewhere else in your town or your community. So if you don't have someone actively answering the phone, uh, those leads are going to get missed. And I'm going to show you some ways that we, can, that we incentivize our staff to be picking up the phone on Sunday mornings. Cause you really like, who really wants to be doing that on a Sunday or a Saturday, but it's important that they're not, they're not dropped. And then finally with urgency is that make sure you have some sort of system, whether it's a text reminder, email reminder, or phone reminder for a patient's new patient appointment. Text works really well. What statistics are showing is that patients are a lot more receptive to texts now than they are to phone calls. So whether it's a text or a really quick phone call saying, Hey, Sam, I just want to give you a reminder about your new patient appointment tomorrow at 9 a.m. That's it. That's all you have to do. So make sure that your staff is following up for, uh, for their first day one appointment. All right. So that, uh, that's 
all I wanted to talk about with urgency. So just to, to recap, make sure you're following up within five minutes, make sure you're actually doing quality control with your staff and, uh, and make sure that um, you have some sort of system or backup system to make sure that you can, you and your staff can, can actually answer calls and respond to leads in a timely way. All right. So number two, you need to have some sort of script to follow. And what happens, what I find happens really often in clinics is that they, they don't actually have a scripted system or they have a scripted system, they, they just don't use it. So there are three reasons why, three main reasons why patients won't show up in your office for a day one appointment. The first one, and this is kind of a no brainer, is that your staff is not friendly. So they're talking to somebody and you've all talked to like operators or, or customer service people on the phone and they're like, hello, this is, Andrew at Wells Family Chiropractic, how can, I, how can I help you? Oh, you have back pain? Okay, good. <laughs> like, like awful customer service. So when, we, when our staff was on the phone, it was required, and we made it kind of fun, but it was required that they had to smile when they're on the phone. So it's really hard to be smiling and not have a really uptone communication. And so we would, some, and if my, if my staff, like I had some really shy staff and they, they felt really uncomfortable doing that. So I would like put a mirror in front of them in a fun, like joking way. So they reminded them to smile. And when people are smiling on the phone, you can hear that on the other end of the line. And that makes such a, a big difference to the way patients or potential patients perceive your office. And if you're friendly versus angry or bored or not interested, they're going to pick up on that. So, so make sure that your staff is friendly uh, make sure they're smiling. The second reason people won't show up to your practice is that you're giving away way too much information on the first call. Now, uh, this is an assumption, but my guess is most of you on the line here have some sort of day one, day two, maybe even a day three uh, new patient process. And that new patient process is, is essentially a sales process. Yes, there's an exam part built into it, but there's a sales part to it. And what we're finding is that uh, a lot of offices, their front desk staff is giving away all of their day one and day two information on the phone. And what happens is you're doing, you're trying to do like an impromptu consultation or day one or report of findings, yet you know very little about the patient. And here's where these, here's where it kind of goes, it goes sideways. And these are the questions that, um, that, that typically show up on day one. The patients will call and say, Hey, uh, Sam, uh, I have, uh, I have back pain, uh, or I, I'll say I have a headache. W what do you guys do for a headache? And then the pa and then the, the front desk will say, well, for, we have this amazing headache protocol. Um, the first thing we do is the doctor will, um, will look at your neck and then you'll probably get adjusted. And the great thing about adjustments is they're really safe and they're really effective with headaches. And we have lots of patients that have headaches that have, have really been helped with chiropractic care. And, uh, you know, and, and so it, it goes, the, the, you start like talking about things. So that patient may have never been to a chiropractor. They may be freaked out about chiropractic. Uh, they may have certain like stigmas about chiropractic. So you don't want to give away, you don't want to start having your, your front desk staff give out that information. So let me give you an example. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, my wife and I were watching a movie. I'm eating popcorn. And all of a sudden, like I bite down and there's this huge crunch. I'm like, oh, I think like I chipped my tooth. And sure enough, like chipped a pretty decent sized part of my tooth. I'm like, oh my gosh. And it was like late at night or watching a movie. And I'm like, shoot, I got to get this taken care of. I called, uh, I called the uh, a dental, my dentist and it, it was after hours. So I got an answering service. And um, just imagine for a minute if I said, hey, I, I chipped my tooth, uh, Mrs. Answering Service. Uh, I just want to know, like, what, what is a dentist going to do for this? Like, what, are the, what is that person going to say? Uh, I don't know. Well, let's set up an appointment and you can meet with a dentist to figure out how to, how to best help you. And so let's say I said, you know what, um, well, how much is going to cost? And the person's going to say, well, you know, that's a great question. Um, it really depends on what the dentist has to do. And my question is, well, what does that mean? What, what, is it, what, what does that mean, what, what, depending on what the dentist has to do? Well, maybe they take x-rays. Maybe they have to take one x-ray or a series of x-rays. Maybe they have to do some sort of uh, special test for a chipped tooth that might cost a little bit more than a routine visit. So you're, the patient sometimes expects that the person answering the phone is going to have all the answers. And what happens is they start, and, and you, they, your staff may have all the answers, right? They may know exactly what your day one process looks like and your day two process looks like. But if you're giving that away information over the phone, there are so many reasons why a patient would say, nope, that's not right for me. Or nope, I don't want to do that. That's not what I had in mind. 
So let your day one and day two process do the selling for you. The job of your front desk is one thing. It's to get that patient to show up for day one. That's it. So the more information you're giving away, the less likely, and it seems counterintuitive, but it's less likely they are to, to actually show up into your clinic. So when you get questions like, well, is my insurance going to cover it? Here's how we always answer it. That's an awesome question. Uh, when you, when you, the first thing we're going to do is set up an appointment for a consultation in our, in our office. When you show up on that first visit, bring your insurance card with you and we'll verify to see uh, if, you're, if your care is covered. Right, so you're answering their question, but you're not, you're not giving them specific information. So let's say, let's use an example where it's a cash-based service. So let's say someone calls in and says, hey, I'm interested in stem cell therapy or PRP or regenerative medicine. Uh, is my insurance gonna cover it? Well, you know what, that's a great question. The first step is to set up an appointment in our office for us to evaluate you. Bring your insurance card with you and we'll verify your insurance benefits. Even though I know it's not covered or likely not covered, I'm not going to tell the patient that over the phone. And there's a lot of reasons for that that we can get into. A couple, but a couple of major reasons is you don't want to even, let's say the patient comes in and you're like, hey, I asked if this was covered by insurance. It's not covered by insurance. Uh, you know, I, I can't do it. Well, maybe you have another service that's covered by insurance that you can offer the patient. Or maybe they don't need regenerative medicine at all. Maybe they need chiropractic care or physical therapy or something else. So just don't like, don't limit your patient's beliefs because just because you know something isn't covered by insurance. So we, um, we had this, and I, I hope that makes sense. Like, so the job is to just get them in the door, let your day one, day two process take care of itself. And so we had this, um, we had this really sweet front desk girl, um, like super nice, like, uh, like very loving type personality patient. And when, uh, when we were doing like, we were doing a lot of regenerative medicine and she would get a lot of leads for like stem cell type injections. And, and she, her job was to get people to come to a seminar and the patients would always ask the same questions. Like, is this covered by insurance or does it like, tell me about what type of procedure you do. And she would go into these long, like five, 10, 15 minute consultations. And they would always end in the patient not showing up. And I would just, I would try to tell her like, Hey, just read the script, use the script, use the script. And she's like, listen, they're, they're, they're asking these questions. I feel bad if I'm not answering the question. And so she would go, she would actually hide in the back office where no, no one else could hear her. Cause she would like answer as many of the patient questions as possible, but she was just absolutely obliterating our statistics. So finally we had to take her off that role. Like, look, you can't do this anymore. You're really nice. You're really sweet, but you're giving away the farm on the first call. And that's just destroying all of our stats. So make sure if you have a script, make sure that your, your staff is using and following the script and not going into a consultation on, on day one. As much as it may feel counterintuitive, it's going to crush your stats. Well, friend, not way too much information. Uh, lead call should be about five minutes. If you're getting into like the seven, 10, 12 minute range, you're talking too much or you're not controlling the conversation. Back up 30 seconds, okay. please. So you, you, you ended really well on the, on the gal in the closet. She was messing up the yeah. stats. Go back real quick. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason that was happening was she wasn't asking good questions. Now, the person who asked the questions on the phone call is the person controlling the conversation. So what would happen is she would get in this vicious cycle of the patient would ask a question. She would answer the question. And then she wouldn't say anything. And the patient would ask another question and she would answer the question and then wait for the patient to say something else. So she got in this, like she, she was, she was communicating in a way that was inviting a lot of questions. And so the, the prospective patient, if they had questions, they would either ask a bunch of questions or just ramble on about their condition and what, you know, what doctors they've been to and what they've tried already. And so it ended up being like a 20 minute phone call. So one of the strategies we've developed over the years that worked really, really well is that Anytime our front desk staff would say something, they, they, they would end the sentence in a question. And the question would lead uh, to, would, would escalate during the call to eventually setting up the appointment. So let me give you an example. The patient would call in and say, hey, I've got, uh, I've got elbow pain and uh, I, I would like to see if I can get this taken care of. Well, thanks for calling so much. Uh, yep, elbow pain is a really common condition we see and we get great results with that. So let me get a little bit of information for you. Let me start off by your name. What's, what is your name? Uh, my name is Andrew Wells. Okay, what's your phone number? 828, blah, blah, blah. 
Um, have you done anything for it so far? Uh, yeah, I've, I've had some cortisone injections and PT and that didn't, and that didn't work. Okay. Uh, so what, what we're going to do, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but what we're going to do, Andrew, is we're going to get you in for, uh, to have our doctors take a look at you. The first, uh, we start our first visit with a consultation. It's completely free and it's designed to see if we can help you. What time would work best for you? Mornings or afternoons? Uh, afternoons. Okay. What time works better? We have a three o'clock or a one o'clock, which works better for you. So what you see, what I'm doing is I'm every sentence I'm using, I'm ending in a, uh, I'm ending that interaction with a question. So the more questions I ask, the more they're reciprocating with answering. I'm leading them down the, the script that I want to lead them down, eventually ending in asking for an appointment. So what happens if the patient's asking all the questions, you, again, you get into these long cons consultations and you're wasting a bunch of time and giving away too much information. So we train our staff always to be asking questions, asking questions, asking questions. When you, when you end a sentence with no question, it invites a question from the patient. So that's how you, that's how you get quickly through your script without giving away the farm. And so that's something that we, we train on. And so that brings me into my next, uh, my next point is uh, for doctors listening, when, when are you training your, your staff? And if, if the answer is, well, we, we train when we need to, it's probably not enough. So in our clinics, at the very least, we would train at least once a week. So every Tuesday, it, it was typically every Tuesday and Thursday at 1230, we would train over the lunch hour. We would train on something for one hour. So we had built-in time in our schedule where we train on uh, uh, converting new patient leads or uh, what happens when a new patient walks in the door or how to do an ROF. So we always had something we were training on. And we would never go more than two weeks without training on what we're talking about today, converting Facebook or, or new leads into patients, into day one, uh, uh, day one patients. Because if, if you go more than two weeks without training on it, what happens is your staff will start to change the script. They start adding their own things into the script. They, go, they, they start diverting away, not because they're trying to intentionally harm the clinic. It's, this is human nature. If you don't train on something, you're going to lose that skill. So we would train, like, and when I say train, it's not just reading the script and, hello, welcome to Will's Family Chiropractic. We would role play. So one person in the office would be a patient. One person would be the front desk, and we'd go, ring, ring, ring. Hey, this is Andrew. Thanks for calling. We would actually go through the script and then we would throw out a bunch of curveball questions and hard objections and we'd train on how to answer those objections. And we did this so many times that we like my, our front desk were like we're we're absolute experts in diverting objections and questions into people showing up into the clinic. Not because they were talented, like naturally talented. It was because we actually trained on it and we trained over and over and over and over and over again on it until whatever the objection the patient had over the phone, our, our staff knew how to handle it. And so you don't want to, you want to make sure that, and the reason we train on it is so I want to know what they're saying as the clinic owner, like how are they handling these questions? And so, um, so just make sure that you have some sort of training. I don't know if you guys hear this, but Siri's popping up on my computer. Oh, we don't hear it. We're good, buddy. Okay, cool. Yeah, so just make sure that you're training. And, and so, set, so if, if you get anything from this training today on the webinar, go on your schedule and your clinic schedule, pick a time that you can start working and training with your staff if you're not already doing it. And it doesn't have to be on converting new patients. It could be on anything, but you should have a list of about a dozen or so like skills, office skills that you need to role play and train on. So if you're not training on it, I promise you it's not going to go the way you're, you know, you're expecting or anticipating. Your staff needs, they need direction. Um, and then one, one more thing on this, this topic is we always had what we call a clinic one-liner. And the clinic, clinic one-liner was if a patient called up and said, hey, uh, I saw your ad on Facebook, what, what type of clinic are you? You want to be able to tell the clinic really clearly what type of office you are in about 10 to 15 seconds. So for example, if someone called our office, our one liner was, well, we're an integrated clinic. That means we're a team of medical doctors, nurse practitioners, chiropractors, and physical therapists. And we help our patients with health issues without using drugs and surgery. That was our one liner. So if I ever, we had kind of a joke. If I ever like went up to our staff members and said, Hey, what's the one liner? They should be able to rattle off that one liner um, without, with, with ease, without making it feel awkward. So sometimes some of the clinics I work with, especially integrated clinics, when, when patients ask like, what kind of office are you? Well, we, 
have this doctor and this we, sometimes a nurse practitioner and they do injections and they do, but we don't, we don't, we don't do drugs, but we do some medical services and, and basically we help like, it, it's kind of like all over the board. So you want to make sure that you really articulate and, and define what you, you know, what you guys do, what your, what your main uh, uh, clinic objective is. Okay. So and come up with your one liner. Yeah. What is your one liner? We're an integrated clinic, which means we're a team of medical doctors, nurse practitioners, chiropractors, and physical therapists, and we help our patients get better without drugs and surgery. Money. I love it. You yeah. rattled that off like you'd done it a billion times. It's perfect. I love it. Yeah. And, and, and so here's the deal. I haven't been in the clinic mode for years, but we did it so often that I can do that in my sleep. It's like, what, 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 what are your kids' names? I can tell you my kids' names and data. Birth. Like, I, I know it that well. So can I go back real quick because I may have missed this and maybe I'm jumping ahead, but you said there's three reasons why people don't come in. And I have reason number one, the, the front staff is just not friendly. They don't relate. Reason number two is you're giving away too much information on the call. Did we, are we, did we forget three or are we going there? No, just, yeah, just go in there. Sorry. This is okay, why it would have been good to have slides. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I'm no doing problem. this by, by memory. Yeah, so you're, you're absolutely right. The third reason why patients won't show up is you're scheduling out way too far. So if a lead comes in, you want to get that person in your office within three business days. So for example, today is Thursday. You got to get that person in on Friday the next day. Monday, when over three days, your conversion rates go into the toilet. So if it's one day, you'll have about a, you should have about a 90% conversion. Three days out. So if you schedule, so if you have a patient that says can't come in for like two more weeks in our office, we'd say, well, yeah, we're actually booked up two weeks. We're actually booked up a month out. You don't have anything on the schedule. So what we can do, but we do have a couple of cancellations. We can get you in either tomorrow at one o'clock or on Monday at three o'clock, which would work better for you. Let me so we'd, we'd like. Let me run it back real quick. Sorry, we, we broke out for just a minute. But basically, it's the rule of three, right? If we can't, if, if we if we go past three days, we're hosed. And so day one, it's 90. I always thought that like I had published data that it was 80% plus your experience is 90%. Yeah, I, I, I'm somewhat making that up. I haven't looked at that stat. No, in a while, it's actual yeah, data. It's, yeah, 80 plus. published yeah. data. It's uh, oh, I didn't 80, know it. Okay. 50, uh, 80, 50. I'm going off of memory, 80, 50, 30, and then five. So yeah, so yeah that's exactly one day right. after 80% show, two days after 50% show, three days after 30% show, four days after 5% show. Yeah, that, that lines up exactly with what we, we experienced in our clinics. Okay. So yeah, so... We, and so, so now we'll, so now we go from that important data to some people are going to say, oh, well, I can't do four days from now, or, or I want to do four days from now. And your approach is say, sorry, that's booked, but we have time within the three day window. Here's the heart for doctors. It's like the patient to come in and it's like, well, I can only come in next, you know, week seven days from now it's so easy for your front desk so, yeah you know what we do have that well, let me let me schedule that for you but you can't do it so we had a hard firm policy where nope we're doing that it's not within three days the answer is you know what our clinic is actually booked even though it wasn't it was a white lie but the clinic is booked so the only the only times we have available are tomorrow afternoon or monday morning which one we're, we're, we're because we know we, you know, sometimes we would cheat and we we're like, no, nah, let's just schedule them out. They never so these bunch of people blocking up our new patient schedule that aren't even anyway. So, and, and it, we learned like the hard way so many times through so many patients that were three days. Mm. Makes sense. So, yeah. So, so, there, so just to recap what we talked about. So you have, you have to be friendly. Don't give away too much information on the phone. M make sure you're training staff. Make sure you're not scheduling out too far in advance. So three days is the, is the magic number.
So I have a boatload of questions. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And I know that uh, there's at least one question come in. Um, where, how are we on time as far as your presentation? Can I, can I finish up with one? More? Yes, please. Yep. Per I'm, perfect. I'm good. Yeah. And this is so to kind of wrap this up, like this is the one thing I see almost every doctor. I, I see the doctors who are performing really well and have a high level clinic. They know this. And if I'm talking to you, this, this is not for you. Um, if you're not doing this, you absolutely have to implement this. You have to be looking at your stats. You have to manage your stats. So when I ask doctors, like, hey, what is your, you know, how are payers? The answer should not be, oh, it's going okay. That 60 or it's at 92%. If you don't know your stats for your conversions, you're losing a massive, massive amount of money. So let me walk through what the stats actually look like. Hey, Andrew, let's try something real quick. Every, yes, sir. Let's try, sorry. Um, try and turn your camera off just for a second. I mean, I know it's better if we have your camera on, but it's, it's coming in really latent right now. So try and do that. Yeah. And uh, we'll see if that improves the audio quality. Sorry about that, buddy. Okay. Yeah, sorry about this too. I hope it's not on my, uh, on my end. It's way better now. Okay, perfect. Good. People didn't want to see my face anyway. I get it. Um, yeah, so here's how we handled stats. And um, this is when we saw, when we started actually looking at our stats, this is when we made a really um, big jump in terms of growth in our practice because we didn't start out managing our stats and I didn't know what they were. So there are three key stats that you want to track with, in terms of leads. Number one is that you want to track how many leads are actually coming into your office. That's number one. The second stat is how, of those leads, how many people scheduled a day one appointment? And the, the third stat is how many people actually showed up for day one? So you have total leads, you have how many people scheduled, people showed up. And the way we track this is we have a stat sheet in our office at the end of the week, our uh, front desk staff would just plug in the numbers. Okay, we got, uh, for ease of math, we got 100 new leads. We had 60 people show up, or 60 people schedule new patient appointments, and we had 45 people actually show up for day one. That's an inflated number, but just for ease of math. So every week, you need to not only look at the stats, but you need to sit down with your staff, and your staff should look at these as well. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out where the kinks are in, in the clinic just by looking at your stats. So I can look at anybody's stats, any doctor on the call, I can look at your stats and I can get a pretty darn good idea of what's working and what's not just based on your numbers. So here's how the percentages should work. Now, um, if, you're, if you're a super ninja at this, your stats are going to be a lot higher, but let me give you just some general good working stats to know if you're doing a good job or, or, or you have some room for improvement. So let's say you get 100 leads in, 60% of your leads should be converting into scheduled appointments. So if you have 10 leads, you should have six people on the books for day one. Of the people who show up, you should, that, that should be a, a roughly a 75% conversion. So if you have six people on the books, you should get about four to five people actually showing up in, in, into your clinic. Does that make sense, Sam? Do you follow? 100% and I'm loving it. Okay, cool, cool. So that's what we look at. So let's say you had 10 leads and you had one person scheduled on the books, so you had a 10% conversion. Something's wrong either with the urgency in following up the lead or your front desk staff is saying something ridiculous on the phone. That's the problem. They're giving away too much information or they're not pleasant to talk to, whatever. So if you have a, if you have a problem with your scheduled visits, so you have, let's say you have six people on the books, but only two people are sh actually showing up for day one, could be a number of things. It could be you're scheduling out too far in advance. It could be that they went on your website and saw a bunch of bad reviews and they're not showing up. Or maybe you just didn't simply follow up with the patient as a reminder. Um, by the way, remember I mentioned I, had a, I have a tooth issue? So I go back to have my tooth looked at. Uh, my tooth appointment isn't until November 30th. So it's about three and a half weeks out. I'm already getting reminders, emails and texts from the dentist that my appointment's on November 30th. So they do a really good job following. I love those reminders. 
So those are the three stats you want to look at. How many leads are coming in, how many day one scheduled, and how many people are actually showing up. So you had 60% appointment, uh, lead to appointment, 75% of those who show. And then what was the, th did you have a, a stat for the third, uh, for the third, third point? Yeah. So if you have, if 75% of your scheduled visits are showing up, that's decent. Okay. So, okay. so it goes from 60% loss or essentially 40%. losing 40%. Yeah. Then you're losing 25%. So out of, out of 10 people, out of 10 people, out of 10 leads, you should be getting four to five of those actually showing up from Facebook ads. And, and one interesting thing on that too, is just the sales cycle that that's a, that's a 40% initial lost, meaning the, the yeah. first part of the sales cycle. And if, if you're a clinic who focuses so much just on new lead consumption, then, you know, you got to know your numbers, but if you're a clinic who ha who hedges and does re-engagement slash reactivation campaigns, then that'll smooth out your stats. hundred percent. I'm going to hit that in just a minute. And, and one thing I noticed, yeah, one thing I noticed is that when my wife was on the phone, we had an 80% conversion for the patient showing up to the clinic. So if we had 10 leads, eight people would show up into our clinic. I'm like, dang, like my wife's freaking awesome at this. And I, it took me, I'm like, what the wife has is that, that my front desk staff doesn't have. And if you meet my wife, like she's very, like she's shy, she's reserved, she's not outgoing, but if is like so sweet but so with nobody says no to my wife and she is a freaking master and i'm like well why like why is it how is she so good on the phone but if you like if you were to meet her outside the clinic she's totally not like that at all i'm like what's the difference and what i realized over time was that my wife wanted the clinic to make money that was it and, and my wife is not money motivated at all but she won't wanted the, the clinic to be fina financially successful. So she was like, okay, this patient's worth $7,000. Like they're going in. So she had this motivation. So how are your staff to have that same level of urgency? So if you're paying somebody $12 an hour and expecting them to have the same urgency that you have, you're, you're missing. And be as much as you love them. At the end of the day, they're getting paid an hourly rate to do whatever work that needs to get done. They're not going to have the same care that you do, the same urgency you do, because your, your paycheck is tied into the performance of the clinic. So what we did was, this is, a, this is awesome. We hired, a, we hired a, a gal, total like country bumpkin type gal. And, uh, and, and we said, okay, what we want you to do is handle these leads. And here's the script that you need to use. And you could tell like, she's like, yeah, okay, okay. And we said for, and so here's your book. If you get, you have zero to 10 pay, new patients per week, there's no bonus there. If you get 11 to 15, it's 200 bucks. It was like, I think 16 to 20 was like 300 bucks. And so we had like a, we, we, so we had a, a performance system built in for our staff. So if they had like X amount of patients coming in, they would get a bonus. She grabbed the script, literally like swiped it out of my hand. She goes, give me that script. So this is what I need. She's like, this is what I need to do. Like follow the script. I'm like, yep, follow that script. We're going to train on it. I really that like script, that script. Her script was so like, it was full of stains, like tears, rips. Cause she would like study that thing at home. And she was a freaking amazing closer. Just like my wife was because at the end of the month, like an extra 400 bucks or whatever, it was like an extra 5,000 bucks a year for her was an absolute like financial game changer for her. So all we did was we threw her some money to, to make sure that she was doing a really good job with it. And guess what? Never, I never had to look over her shoulder to, to see if she was like following up with leads because she was financially attached to the outcome. Wow. So, so uh, zero to 10, no, no bonus. 11 yeah. to what? 11, and this, I'm sorry, I said per week, I think it's per, per month. If we had 11 to 15 uh, patients show up for day one, that was 200 bucks. And then we have uh, 16 to 20, I, I believe was 300 bucks. And then anything over 21 uh, was 400 bucks. That's awesome. So if we had, yeah. And so here's the cool thing. Like if we had 21 patients coming through the, the door every month, that was a good month for us. And 
definitely a profitable month. It was nothing to pay her, you know, four hundred, four hundred $400 bonus at the end of the month. Cause we could, you know, it was based on volume. Yeah. And man, she was like, she was on top of the leads. Like you wouldn't believe. I love it. Um, yeah. This has been amazing. I, I mean, this has been, there's been so much stuff just chalk through. We've got a couple of questions. Um, are we ready for questions now or, or did you have yeah. more to, to go over? Yeah. Yeah. That's they're kind of the basics I want to go over uh, for today. Okay. Um, and I really just, just first and foremost, thanks again for doing this. I mean, there, there's nuggets and approaches and mindsets and just ways of, of that, that you did this that are so helpful. I mean, again, I spend so much time just on the, how do I get attention and get people to, how do I make as many introductions for our users as possible? And so I spend so much time in that space. I just don't have, I don't have the, the bandwidth or the, the time to go and, and do this. So I appreciate you um, doing this. And I have like all, I mean, this is all questions. I was vigorously writing things. So I'm going to ask a couple things and I have kind of a, um, a outline too, but I guess my first, my first question is, um, okay. So I, I really quickly, just kind of going back to lead quality and things along those lines, you talked about getting to a call within five minutes. If that didn't happen, what were some common, and, and even now when you work with clients, what are some symptoms Meaning some, and the reason I'm asking is because if people, if you identify some symptoms, then people might say, oh, that might be a way we, we, we fix this. So what are some symptoms uh, that doctors might complain about if they're, if they're not getting that five minute time frame? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, there's usually two, two reasons this happens. Either, either the doctor doesn't have enough staff like they just, they they have their front desk staff doing way too many things. They can't delegate. They, they don't have enough time or bandwidth to handle it, which is more of a rare situation. The more common situation is that uh, there, there's just no, there's no incentive or urgency for their staff to, to respond that quickly. D does that, does that make sense? Like, just like the last example I just right. gave you is that yeah. if, if they're. Yeah. So money, they don't see money in the road. They, they, I yeah. mean, at the end of the day, you fix that. So I guess what I was going more towards and I could just kind of say it instead of fish it out of you is, you know, a lot of times people will complain, complain about lead quality or about people. Oh, I didn't submit that. I mean, we know at patient stream, we know the process that people go through to submit their information. So if somebody ever says, Oh, I didn't do that. That's BS. Cause it's, it's, it's multi-step verification. Um, so you, what you're saying is to fix that at the source, we just need to go through and find the money in the road. Okay. Find an incentive, an incentive program to fix that, which I think is huge. Um, you, you also talked about, you know, scheduling, like getting people to schedule on the, on, you know, whether that's call or, or, automated scheduling to where people don't have to talk with the patient beforehand and it just schedules them. And I understand why doctors would want that. I have my own opinions on that, but your opinion on that is basically you're saying, and you, you talked about this at the very beginning was you're, you're going to affect largely your show rate. If you don't have that personal contact beforehand, is that right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, you want to give, there, there's, a, there's something that happens when a patient shows up to your office where they've had some interaction with you already or they haven't. So let me give you an yes. example. If a, if a patient talked to my wife on the phone, when they come in the office, I already know it because they're smiling. They're like, hey, Katie, what's up? <laughs> like, you must be Katie. And Katie's like, hey, you must, be, you must be Sam. It's so great to see you. Like, we're so happy to have you here. And they're smiling, just like you're smiling right now. They're like, they're anticipating coming in. You don't get that if you're if you're if you're doing it in an automated way. There's no personality there whatsoever. You lose it. Yes. And that was one of the things in our office is that we had such good customer service and such good communication, and we were happy and smiling and always loving on our patients. Like if you came in our office, it's like, man, I want to be here. 
And, and yeah. so we, we could, you could give that to a patient over the phone. You know, it's so funny you say that. And, and I'm now, this is, I love this. This is prompting me to do, to, to do more trains and things like that. So we have a user, um, which I don't know if she's here or not, but Michelle Sims. And um, she did a training for us where we went through and we, uh, we, we customized, we personalized her follow-up sequence to have more of their, um, the, more of their soul and their, their personality in it. And she does so good at just converting patients. Like they fill up their schedule like nobody else and everybody wants that result. And they all think it's, it's a, it's a, it's a black and white thing, meaning it's a, it's a, well, the system did it. No, she right. did it with the system. Right. Yeah. And, and so uh, I love that. You're totally right. And I have, I mean, even when I was consulting, I, I started out in this business by consulting practices. Even when I was consulting, you knew the, the people when they come in who loved to be there and you knew the people who were like, uh, you know, and it's, it's so funny too, cause I have, I got five sisters, five of them. Oh and, um, I had a sister who worked for a windshield company. Like, you know, they do like wind, windshield sales and things like that. She goes into this room full of call, like a, a call center. She becomes the top salesperson in like a week. And it, she has like no, no, no technical sales training or skills, but she was so nice and so friendly. People loved her and it was in her tone. It was in the way she authentically interacted with people. So uh, I loved how you, how you uh, shared that. Um, examples of, so I always tell people that, one of the reasons why their show rate is, is suffering is because they, they go too quickly for the commitment before the engagement. And what I mean by that is don't, run, don't rush to get people scheduled first before you have a time to relate to them via discussing their issue, discussing their problem. Um, is, is, that, is that in line with, with how you look at this or is, is there a better approach to start the conversation? Yeah, that's so important. You're, you're, you're right. And you, you have to have, you have to build some rapport with the patient over the phone. And there's a lot of ways to do that where the, the things that are effective is that, you know, let's, let's say, um, let's say, so Sam, let's, let's role play it. For, yeah. So you, so you be the patient. So you're calling in with back pain. Yep. Hey, um, uh, Hey, thanks for calling me. Yeah, I have uh, pretty severe back pain, and I'm wondering if you guys take my insurance. Oh, wow, Sam. Well, first of all, I'm really sorry that you have back pain. Actually, um, sorry. I'm just going to jump in on your role play. I want to rewind your – this is Jacob, by the way, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Sam. I thought that, you know, was, God, I thought that was God speaking for a minute. Hey, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew and Sam, please cease. No, uh, let's rewind your role play a little bit because I think we jumped into the conversation at a point when we've actually already kind of missed a, a, a key opportunity because Andrew, you would be the one calling and all Sam would be doing was picking up the phone. And I think one of the, the, the biggest components that I think people fall off on is that very, very first interaction of, hi, mm -hmm. I'm Andrew, I'm with this clinic. And then what you say after that to then start that conversation. So let's rewind to Sam literally just picked up the phone and said, hello. Sounds good. Go ahead, Andrew. Yeah, great, great point. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, hi, is this Sam? Yeah. Hey, Sam, this is Andrew calling from Wells Family Chiropractic. How are you today? I'm doing good. Uh, the reason I called is I just got a notification that you're dealing with some back pain and potentially looking for some help. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I, I do actually have some back pain. Uh, I'm, first of all, I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, how long have you been dealing with back pain? Oh man, it seems like it's been ongoing for the last year and a half, two years. It's been been a while now. Wow, that's a long time. That's not good. Um, what was the main reason for you calling today? Uh, I saw I saw your guys's two back treatment thing, and you know, I just I I wanted to know more about it, and and uh, just. Wanted to know also if, if it was covered by my insurance. I know you said there's two visits, but I'm guessing there's something after that. 
Yeah, that, that's a great question. So first of all, this is a really common issue we see, and we've helped a lot of patients with lower back pain. So the first step to figure out if we can help you is to have you come in the office and we start with a free consultation to talk more about your issue and to see if we can help you. If so, we'll do an exam on the same day. And if you have a chance, uh, when you come in for the first visit, um, please bring your insurance card with you and we'll have our team look at uh, your insurance and uh, verify your benefits and see if this is covered under your, your plan. Okay. So um, the next available appointment we have would be, uh, first of all, let me ask you, are mornings or afternoons better for you? Uh, mornings. I'm a morning person. Mornings. Okay, great. We have actually an opening tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Would that work for you? Sure. Okay. So understand I haven't done this in about five years. I was just going to say, <laughs> but totally yeah, put it you, was rusty. Totally put no. you on the spot. No, I, I offered up the role play. So, uh, <laughs> so disclaimer, that sucked really bad. I yeah. really, so this goes back to my point. If you haven't trained on something in two weeks, you're probably going to be and, pretty bad at it. And I would just say but, too, um, Andrew, have you seen my, my daily marketer script? Just going to say the exact same thing. Yep. I have, I have a script that I wrote like two years ago. And, uh, it was, I started writing it or, or role-playing it with our, my clients when I was a consultant. And so it works. Um, if you don't have that, sorry, if you don't have that, then I can, I'd be happy to send it to you. Um, but yeah, it, it the, the thing, the thing that's important about that script is that first to like that first, like, hi, is Andrew there? Right. The tone, the certainty, the, the friendliness, all that stuff. And then just changing the conversation. So it's geared around them and their problem before you ever start again. Yeah. Not over giving, not giving too much information about your solution or whatever it is. That's key. So, um, yeah, yeah but, and what like, we would do, again, I, yeah, I haven't done that in a while. So what we would do, and if we had a new staff member, we had our script laminated at the front desk. So if they ever felt like, oh, shoot, what was the script again? They could pick it up and just read off of it. So, if it, like, so what, I, what I should have done for this training is I should have printed out your script I've looked at, by the way, is really good. All you have to do is just read, the, go, read and go through the script, but be authentic with it. So the reason mine sucked really bad is because I did, I literally haven't done it in like five years and I should have used this. <laughs> he should have used the script. And what I'll do too is I will post the script in the Facebook group today. I'll post the actual file. Um, so people can, can have that. And if you're not in the Facebook group, um, just search patient stream users group and I will let you in. I'm happy to do that. Um, Cool. I know, I know we're kind of running over on time here. I got a bunch of stuff. We might have to have you again. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Okay. And I, and I can stay on longer if you want me to stay on longer. I've got, uh, I've got yeah. like another 20 minutes or so. Cool. Um, texting versus calling. Uh, it, I, I wrote this question down in context of the weekend. Um, you're, the weekend, and this comes back to money in the streets, all that kind of stuff. Different people are going to be motivated by different things. Do you have, for that initial contact, do you have, um, I mean, advice on texting versus calling? We always had, uh, we would always call people over the weekend. And what we would do is, it, it's definitely more work, but the conversion is a lot higher. And what happens is if you could, if a patient contacts you on the weekend or submits a lead during the weekend and somebody actually calls them from the clinic, they're really impressed. Like, wow, you call me on a Sunday afternoon or a Saturday, Saturday morning, like that's impressive versus like an automated response. So uh, texting is texting actually works pretty well. And I, I haven't looked at the stats in a while, but I, I, th I think they're pretty similar. We always, we just liked the, the personal approach to answering leads over the weekend. And the way we would do that is we would just every weekend, one person in our staff would be responsible for handling leads over the weekend. And we would just give them an extra bonus for doing that. Okay. I love it. So, I love it. I'm going to go to, uh, there's a couple questions in the chat. And if you guys have any other questions, go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm going to stick around. And so is Andrew. If you guys are going to stick around, we're here. Uh, Dan Hungerford says, uh, when we've been getting questions on Facebook ads in the Facebook comment section below this ad, is this where you should type a response or, uh, or try to communicate privately? Uh, I'll let you answer that. I have my thoughts on that, of course. Yeah, I think, um, 
as long as if you're answering directly uh, in your Facebook page, just make sure that you're not using specifics. So kind of like just the same approach with like a day one call, you don't want to give away too much information. So if they're asking about insurance or finances or specific therapies, always give some generalities and lead toward, Hey, you know, it sounds like we could potentially help you. Um, let me reach out to you either through direct messenger or give them a, a call or email if they give you your contact information, but be very general and don't give specifics if you're going to use uh, the Facebook page. Yeah. I love it. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, and Dr. Cooper, all of those stats that uh, Dr. Wells was discussing, you can, those, we have all those for you in patient stream. So long as you're moving things down the pipelines. Uh, Dr. Ferrante, do you do an exam after a free consult or day one show and do you charge? He's got two questions. So I'll let you answer that one. Quick. Yeah. 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 We, uh, great question. Uh, we always do an exam right after the consultation and the reason for the consultation. Oh, you dropped out. Be, you know, we have good customer service and we're, we're like, Oh, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. The reason for, uh, so yeah. just back up. The reason is, yeah, so the reason we do the consultation is it's a really good opportunity for the patient to get to know us and get a good feel for, for who we are. And it also gives us a really good opportunity to answer questions and handle objections before they see your provider. Okay. Because here, here when, uh, let me finish one more thought on that. When patients show up, a lot of times they have one or two things that they just feel like they need to get off their chest. Like, hey, I've had this for 10 years. I don't think you can do anything about it, but I, I'm, I'm here because I want to try. Or, hey, I'm really like, money is really tight right now. I'm really concerned about it. I don't know if I can afford care. You just need to walk them through those objections before they, you know, before they visit with your, your provider. Okay. And then his second question is, do you educate them using a webinar or seminar before you exam them? I don't like doing that because it, it's... Um, and it's a really, it's a really good question. Um, what I prefer instead of like doing webinars and seminars is doing some kind of like patient testimony on specific conditions. So you have like your headache patient or your back pain patient or your knee pain patient, and you're having the patient do some kind of testimony video that's well, you know, well produced that talks about the results they got for that issue without going into the specific therapies that you offer. Yeah, I can, I can, I mean, that make on, sense, Tim? yeah, it does. And, and I can comment on, on that as well. I think webinars and seminars are absolutely phenomenal. It, 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 it but it kind of depends on, on, on the niche and on the condition. I think like, so for example, um, if somebody watches a web right now, we're in the middle of COVID. If somebody watches a webinar that you're able to do, um, that you put on, that's awesome. But it's not a requirement, I guess, is, is what I'm saying. If you're part of Blueprint and you have their proven like webinars and seminars that they do, man, that is like, that is, by the way, that's like the cheapest money you'll ever spend because a person who is educated converts, right? But, but it's, it's knowing how to, to pre-frame them. So when they sit down, they're not annoyed. Oh, I don't want to say it. It's like, no, 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 no. This is part of finding out if this is a fit. We want you to understand. We want you to know how this works. So uh, education when, when positioned in, so education as the offer makes a ton of sense. If you, if you invite somebody to a webinar, of course, they're going to be educated. They're ready to come in and they're further down the sales cycle. If somebody comes into the clinic, you don't want to go so quick to the webinar or the seminar that they would watch there with you until you've kind of checked off some of these, bo uh, kind of checked off some of these boxes. You know, you want them to relate. You don't, it's, you don't want to ask for the second date before the first one is halfway over, right? You want to go through that process, make sure they feel really comfortable. They know exactly who you are. They've heard your one liner and they know exactly what you do. And then you can, um, then you can poise them up because education is always, is always powerful. Um, the questions are, what is the treatment for? I'm going to have to go back real quick, Dan. Let's see here. Oh, oh, so remember I asked you that question about, uh, comments on Facebook, the comments that he's talking about are related to, uh, what is the treatment for? 
Uh, you broke up a little bit there, but I, I think I understand the question. So they're, yeah. they're asking on uh, the Facebook user are asking what the treatment is. Yes. Or what is got the, it. Yeah. With the treatment. Yeah. In the comment section. Okay. Yeah. So, so Dan, I would just say that, um, you want to be, you want to be marketing and educating on the condition. So the treatment is for knee pain or the treatment is for back pain or it's for headaches. When you start getting into what type of specific therapy you're using for that condition, that's where you'll, you'll start losing patients that way. So let me give you an example. Uh, you have knee pain and what's your treatment? Uh, the treatment is f a series of five hyaluronic acid injections. And the patient's like, well, I already had that, so I'm going to check this, this office off the list. Yeah. When they don't know, maybe there's some other things that you can offer as well. So that's why you don't want to be given like little mini consultations on Facebook or, or an email because you're, you know. So in the comment section, what might you say instead? Would you say something like, uh, this is a non-invasive non approach to knee pain, um, but it's not a fit for everyone, so we, we encourage you to you know, reach out or something along those lines or what, what, what is, what is kind of the, yeah, an example. Yeah. You kind of build off of that one liner I talked about before. So when they ask, what is the treatment? You can say, Hey, you know, we are a, you know, we're a, an integrated office and we offer solutions to joint pain other than drugs and surgery. And, okay. and if the question is, well, what specifically are you using? Well, that's a great question in order to figure out what therapy is appropriate for you we would first have you come in for an evaluation to see how we can help you. Yes. All of our treatments are, are patient, you know, patient specific to get the best results, you know, something yeah. to get the, to, to ensure the best, the, the best end result. We like to make sure we do a thorough evaluation of every patient that comes in so we can make sure that our programs are fit for you. Yeah. You have and a good time. And to give and you an example. And then you end with a question, right? Do you have a yes. good time to do your, your consult, right? Something along those hundred percent. Yeah. So, so going back to that dental uh, example I used before, like imagine I went to the dentist and said, Hey, what therapy do you use for a chipped tooth? They're not going to say, well, we could do a right. root canal. We could pull your tooth. We could do a crown. We could do, they're, they're going to say, you know, that's a great question. Let's set up a time for you to come in and we can figure out what, what treatment would be best for your situation. Right. So you're answering the question without answering the question. And then the, the voice of omnipotence here real quick. Um, <laughs> so uh, the other thing that just to, to put out there, um, you know, and I think Andrew, you, you mentioned this, you use a cell phone, right? Patient stream provides tracking phone numbers. Uh, the other thing I would highly recommend in your comments is give them the, the phone number that you have your tracking number to, um, to then say, Let's get it. Let's schedule a call, uh, or let you know, schedule a time and have them give you a call. Put that out there for a couple reasons. One, more than that person's going to see that phone number, which means you're going to get people that are going to organically outreach for free, which is great for saving some money on Facebook ads. The other thing is Facebook itself loves that kind of interaction. Um, believe it or not, their their algorithm does look at that interaction. It does recognize what type of interaction that is, and it will actually help. Uh, get your post more organic reach. It'll help get your post cheaper on Facebook ads. So uh, making sure that your comments um, can spark conversation is what Facebook is looking for. Um, that's what, uh, what you want to shoot for. So um, just wanted to, to throw that out there from the, the algorithmic standpoint as well. Okay. Sorry. I had a quick, Okay. Um, how do you, Oh, this is a good question. Do you do, how do you, uh, do you believe in taking a deposit? So let's say it's a direct office offer worth a $47 thing. What are your thoughts on charging on the phone call prior to the person coming in to reduce no show? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, we actually tried it. So we didn't do that originally. Then we, we, uh, we, uh, did a pilot program to see if it would reduce our increase or reduce our show rate and actually reduced it. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a barrier of entry to the patient. And they're like, Hey, I don't want to give you any money. I don't even know if I want to come to your office. I don't even know what therapy you're doing. And so it, we found it to actually turn off. Patients. So it, out of deposit, if you, if you're using the same, uh, I think I had a break up. If you're using the same techniques we just talked about, so urgency, good communication, 
having a, you know, having someone who's, who's scripted and is pleasant to talk to on the phone. Um, those are, those are the things that increase your show rate. So, so Charles, just keep in mind, like the people are reaching out to you because they, they want help. They're generally interested to a degree, some interested more than others. But if you handle that person with a high degree of customer service, a high degree of urgency, make it easy for the patient to show up to your office, make sure that it's, you know, they're, they're getting in in the first three days. That's what keeps your show rates high. It's not, I, I've never had success in, uh, with, with uh, deposits. And, and I want to chime in here because uh, everybody hears about the unicorns where, and honestly, unicorns are like the biggest, one of the biggest things that lead people to fail in this is because they're like, well, my friend did it and this and that and the other. There are people that I have seen and even past clients, people that I know in the space who do this and it actually has worked. Like it, it has been, you know, it's been successful for them. And the problem is, is, is thinking that that is like the rule and not the exception. It is certainly the exception. So just like you, Dr. Wells, you guys tried it and you tracked it and it didn't work. Um, I know, um, uh, again, back to Michelle Sims, again, she's extremely good on the phone. She's very relatable and um, she, they, you know, she has a way of doing that and it works for her. Um, but if she, she and I were to do a training and she were to say, hey, this is how I do it, I would jump in and say, hey, Michelle's a ninja. It's okay that you're a white belt. Um, so just if, if that one thing doesn't work, don't, th don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I always tell people that taking a deposit, again, it's like it's asking to get married before you're done with the date. You know, that's worse to me than asking for the second date. So, um, you know, you want things to, to, to materialize organically and you want, you want, again, the relationship should develop from its own value and volition. So, um, I, I agree with that. Um, I, there's no more questions coming in and I know we've been going almost an hour and a half. Um, I wanted to throw in just my, just kind of some, some words, some, some final, you know, thoughts on this. This, and we focus mostly just on the process of getting leads and getting them into the clinic. That's been the bulk of today's uh, conversation. And I, what I like about this is there's tactical things. I mean, I hope you guys were taking notes. This will be recorded, um, but I have a, a, a thing full of notes. And this will help me as I'm talking with clinics to give advice and things along those lines. But it's hinges. Okay, what's a hinge? A hinge is a tiny, tiny thing that swings a really big thing. And so if, if you can sit here and take notes and take an honest, good, hard look at what you're doing, then I think just by throwing a couple hinges in your, uh, in your process, you can completely overturn it overnight. And in, in the lead up to this training, I said, you know, um, getting like dialing in your new patient journey, it can be, can happen overnight or it can be a process. And I didn't say that as a sales or a sales tactic. That is absolutely from my experience, what I've seen people do. I've seen people turn around their advertising with a hinge, with one thing, you know, with telling, with telling the front desk, Hey, this is the script that we're doing now. And I want you to dial it in and anybody that we get past this number, I'm going to bonus you here. If that was the one thing that you do, and then all of a sudden your front desk is a ninja on the script, you just changed your entire business, your entire business. That's how, that's what's at stake. And, and, and that's why I, 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 maybe I seem very passionate. I kind of am. It seems crazy to me that a person who was struggling with their, you know, with their process would instantly say, this doesn't work. And I only say that because there are, there, you know, that's not everybody, but there are those people and they start looking outwardly instead of inwardly. And inwardly makes you ask questions like, do I track my stats? What is this stat? What is that stat? If this stat is bad, why is it bad? I would much rather somebody come to me and say, hey, um, our lead, our, our lead to schedule rate is good, but our lead to show rate sucks. What's going on? Is it, is it the, is it the lead? 
understand advertising, our job is to make an introduction to the right person. And when I say the right person, I mean the person that has the thing. I don't mean a person that has a million dollars in their bank account. Come on, man. Like that's, again, that's not how this works. I want the person who has the knee pain. I want the person who has the neuropathy. I want them to wave their hand and say, hello. And a conversation starts. And then we make sure, and then you take your process, Dr. Wells, you take your process and you say, hey, we now know we have the power to take those conversations and turn them into new patients in the door every single month. So I think um, I've got some notes. Maybe Andrew, uh, you know, by the way, if you're in the uh, patient stream group, Andrew is in there. I don't want to uh, bombard you with questions, Dr. Wells, and please don't, don't, it's, this is not an invitation to direct message him and to get something for nothing. You've been so cool to come here and share this with us. Um, you know, maybe we can engage in the group and find some other topics where, uh, where folks can really, again, just get some success in fixing those little hinges and then we're off to the races. So thanks for doing that. Um, any, any parting words before we take off here? Uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. I, I really like this. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity to, to teach what I've done tens of thousands of times. And it, I really do enjoy this. And yeah, um, please feel free to route, reach out to me on the Facebook group. I, you know, again, I, I do this cause I enjoy it. And I, I love watching doctors when the light bulb comes on. And like, I, I love that hinge example when these little, little tiny changes make these big differences. It's so cool to watch that happen. So if I can, if I can help people, I'm, I'm happy to do that. And, um, and yeah, I think, and also I just want to parrot what you're saying about looking inward. You know, I've been in situations where, you know, with Facebook ag agencies, I'm like, man, this Facebook agency sucks. And then we switched to another agency and then that sucked. And we switched to another one. And really what we weren't doing is we weren't, you know, we weren't looking at our own processes and we weren't actually digging in to find out where the, the bottlenecks were. And when we, when we did, it's really revealing and it gave yeah. us, I mean, that, that's really what changed our, you know, went our clinic from a mediocre clinic to a blockbuster clinic. Yeah, I couldn't agree with that more. I mean, that honestly, uh, why won't, patient stream is an awesome tool and I love it. But one of the reasons I really love it is because now instead of like being so client, uh, like so client facing and dealing with their problems right on, I can do trainings like this and I can, I can say, Hey, here, here's a couple of, of ideas, you know, from, from Andrew who's that you can use to, to, to change, to, to, to get better. And this is something we do every single week. I do this every, every Friday now. I did it Thursday because I'm going out of town this afternoon. Um, but Heather's doing trainings and she's doing these trainings because hopefully there's one little nugget in here that'll be a hinge. And that'll be something um, that, you know, that helps change your practice. So thanks again for coming, buddy. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for everybody who came. Um, again, I'll have this recording in the group. If you want this script, I'll put that in the group. Uh, if you want to get in the group, just search patient stream users group on Facebook, and I will certainly admit you in there. And if you want to learn more about patient stream, go to mypatientstream.com. If you want to learn more from Andrew, find him in the group. So see you guys.